U.S. President Donald Trump has faced fierce criticism over his aggressive but largely futile policy towards Iran. Since taking office in 2017, the U.S. President has left no stone unturned to bring Iran to his knees, but that goal still evades him. Trump's failing Iran strategy is providing his foreign policy critics with ammunition just weeks ahead of the upcoming 2020 presidential election. Democrats, particularly his presidential rival Joe Biden, have been vociferous in criticizing Trump's tough line on Iran, including his unilateral withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal. They argue that the American president's signature maximum pressure campaign has piled immense pressure on the Iranians, but it is failing to produce tangible results. The White House, however, remains obstinate and refuses to change course. On Thursday, the Trump administration imposed new sanctions on Iran's financial sector. It blacklisted 18 more Iranian banks in an attempt to further shut the West Asian power out of the global banking system. Uh, with this move, uh, should the remaining banks that still have access to foreign currency es essentially be frozen out, this will only further diminish the channels that Iran utilizes to import uh, important humanitarian goods such as food and medicine. Uh, therefore, as such, uh, one can only conclude that uh, this latest round of sanctions in conjunction with all of the sanctions that have already been placed on Iran are designed to harm the Iranian civilian population and specifically the weakest members of Iran's civilian population. Iran has been targeted by several rounds of unilateral American sanctions. They've seriously hurt the economy and caused the Iranian currency to fall to unprecedented low levels. The pressure campaign has made life hard for ordinary Iranians. Meanwhile, the latest U.S. sanctions could make the ongoing battle against the spread of the new coronavirus harder for the Iranians. That is because the newly targeted banks are key in importing humanitarian goods like food and medicine. Iran is already grappling with shortages of some basic drugs and specialized chemotherapy and other life-saving treatments. Iran has long branded America's sanctions as economic terrorism because they are making ordinary Iranians suffer on a large scale. On Thursday, the Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif dismissed U.S. claims that the latest round of sanctions would not impact humanitarian transactions. The top diplomat said, however, that Iranians will survive this latest case of the U.S. cruelty. Over the past months, the U.S. has intensified its unilateral pressure campaign against Iran. Trump wants Iranians to return to the negotiating table, but they say that they can no longer trust the U.S. after what it did to the hard-earned Iran nuclear deal. Trump relentlessly pushes other countries to get on board with his favorite anti-Iran campaign, but he has largely failed to achieve that goal. For instance, in September, the U.S. sought to unilaterally reimpose all anti-Iran UN sanctions that had been lifted as part of the 2015 nuclear deal but it failed to get other Security Council members to support the plan to snap back the UN sanctions. Back in August, the US was isolated at the UN Security Council when it tried, in vain, to extend the UN arms embargo against Iran. After such failures, some are describing Trump's Iran policy as embarrassing. Why is he not abandoning this confrontational path? Some observers believe the US isolation could further deepen if it refuses to change its current approach towards Iran.